Hi everyone, it's Amy with Renewing Stitches. How are you today? Uh, glad you're back. This is Floss Tube Extra and I didn't even look. Ha 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 ha. Floss Tube Extra number nine. This is, and I'm going to write it down, number nine. These are my extras where we do flip throughs of older magazines, um, classic, vintage, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> These are magazines, <clears throat> excuse me, from the 80s and 90s uh, for my collection and I just thought we would have fun and flip through them. So this is number nine in that series of extras and um, if you're new to this channel, uh, this is a cross stitch channel and the floss tube extras are uh, stem from my love of the oldies so hence the name renewing stitches let's bring them back <laughs> so today we're going to flip through mary hickmott's new stitches this is issue number two um, this is a british magazine um i had to look it up it was it's um and i don't know where it's published now but it, this is published back when it started was published in fab Faversham, Kent. I'm so sorry. I probably did not get that right at all, but Kent, I can say that name. <laughs> um, published in Kent in um, England. So um, this is an excellent magazine. I have enjoyed looking through this and let me just show you. It was $5 originally in the States. Um, I don't know what it was and I don't know if it says at the bottom no, it doesn't say what it was originally um, overseas, but um, yeah, it was a bi-monthly publishing from Creative Crafts um, in Favers Faversham, Kent. Um, this was 19, the, re the first one was in 1992. This is 1993 is the date on the, on the, um, the publishing part but it's issue number two it doesn't say fall or spring or winter so it's a mixture there's not any Christmas in here so I'm thinking it's somewhere spring maybe if the first one was I'll have to look I'll have to look and see where the first when the first one was done anyway <clears throat> this first photo the cover piece this one not these two we'll talk about those later this one is called Hall House, and it is a six-page pattern. Um, it's not a full six pages. Um, one side has um, like half a page with instructions, and the other side is a full page. And the instructions are excellent. The uh, shaded area that shows you what the page is connected to is excellent, and it has, oh, it's just great instructions. So. It's called Hall House. This is 197 stitches wide by 122 stitches high. That's right. I did say that right. Um, let's see here. And when you open the magazine, um, yeah, it's got, um, uh, I wanted commercials came to my head. It's not commercials, advertisements, advertisements, as one in Mary Poppins would say, um, of things that were of the time. The, those of you who watch who are dragon stitchers or medieval stitchers, look at those Janlin kits. Oh dear. Those and the, oh, the carousel. That makes me think of Corinne. Uh, Corey Creates, she has several of the carousel horses. Mm, so pretty. And it was 31 pounds. The carousel was 31 pounds in 1993. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder what it is now. Anyway, so the first one is a letter to, from the editor, Brenda Ross. It talks about how um, thankful she is that the first issue went really well and what the... Um, <clears throat> what's going to be coming in the future months. The next couple of pages are the table of contents, which you get a nice table of contents, some of the pictures of the pieces, and then there is a listing on the next several pages of suppliers. Um, Krynik, somebody um, in Darlington that supplies Krynik. 
Um, and there's a come see us in Brighton and Glasgow. I would love to come see you in Brighton and Glasgow. I'll just hop on over. <laughs> um, that was a conference February 5th through 7th uh, in 93, I'm thinking, where they're selling materials and supplies and books and workshops and demonstrations. Mm. So fun. Okay, and this is the full close-up picture of the Hall House. And it gives a description. Let's see here. That's the, isn't that beautiful? Oh, the confetti. Oh my, but I bet you in person this is just jaw-dropping. Oh dear. So, it gives you a couple of pages about what a hall house or a, what do they call it? A, a Wielden house is. Um, they are throughout Kent and Sussex and into Hampshire, built in by yeomen in the 14th and 15th centuries and it tells why they're why they're called hall houses they had a big hall right in the middle of the house you'll see the chimney the big hall right in the middle of the house um i would love to see one in person or even pictures but in person for sure that would be nice so several pages of instructions um how to do the back stitch the and on every page I mean of the chart you get look at this I'm just going to show you the corner <clears throat> let's see here look at this large well look at this large uh, overlap so you know exactly where it needs to be no second guessing um, how do ideas on um, not ideas but how how to do the back stitching on certain parts is excellent. The next chart is the first of a series. It's a Victorian lady series. And there are five ladies. And those are the five. Sorry, there we go. And the first one is in this magazine. Now they said that the the way it will go is that this will be the first and then you'll stitch these and then the ends. And if you look at the background, that's also stitched. It's part of the chart. It's called hole embroidery. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. She is, did I even write it down? I did not write it down. Where is she? Okay. Didn't write it down. It didn't say, did it? Well, that's fun. Mm -hmm. She's large. <laughs> oh goodness. The whole stitch, maybe it'll show the whole stitch. Okay, it says on okay, 98 stitches wide by 143 stitches high for her. So <clears throat> right here if you do her only she's 93 by 145 is that what I said 143 98 by 143 um, the whole design is 411 stitches high by 143 stitches high 411 wide by 143 high there you go and on 14 count it would be 37 um, inches by 18 inches. Um, it says you'll need one half meter of either fabric. Uh, bought off the roll is plenty is what it says. So, so pretty. So very pretty. All right. You know, I wonder if any of these shops are still over there. In Middlesex, the Redburn Crafts and Needle Craft Center or uh, the portfolio um, the portfolio has a see a, um, a frame that you can stitch yes not a scroll a scroll frame but a oh you know what I'm talking about a stand <laughs> all right next design um, is the bald eagle it is 115 stitches wide by 159 stitches high. 
that is it. And in none of these, all, I mean, all of these are Mary Hickmont designs. Um, it doesn't have another designer. They're all, and even at the beginning, it says a collection of new designs from the Mary Hickmont um, studio. So anyway, this is the bald eagle. Okay. Again, lovely lap, overlap, um, instructions on how to do the face, the eyes and the um, back stitch for the beak. <clears throat> the next section is called Know Your Fabrics, and this is a, a block weave. We're talking about block weaves, which I have learned is a block weave fabric is encompasses all the Ada fabrics. I did not know that. And then it said in the following issues, it would talk about even weaves and linens later on. But this talks about all of the block weaves. And you get, it's very interesting. Very interesting. I'll just show you instead of just talking to you about it. Block weaves. And then it shows you what it would look like on each of the counts. So this is six count. Um, okay, this is six count with six strands of floss. This is six count with three strands of floss. This is eight count Ada worked with six strands. And then eight count Ada with four strands. And 11 count Ada with three strands. Same design, just showing you the difference. Um, probably in saturation, and because look at how puffy and full that looks versus the this is six and this is three strands. Very interesting. Very neat. Um, and at several, cro well, at the one cross stitch shop that I've been to, but several others that I've seen, you know, they have um, a small design or a small border and it show it's shown in different counts of fabric so you can see the design, how the design is going to size up or down. Okay. 11 count Ada with three strands of fabric. Fabric. Ha! Ah, three strands of floss. Hmm. 14 count Ada with three strands. 14 count Ada with two strands. I never thought about doing three strands with 14 count Ada. But it's pretty full and bulky. That's nice. 16 count Ada with two strands. It continues on. Look at this. <laughs> okay. This is 16 with two strands. And these are, let's see here. This is 18 count Ada with two strands and one strand. And then it goes into the Damask, Damask um, Ada's. And they are, let's see here. This is 11 count with three strands. And 14 count with three, two, and this is 14 count with three strands, and 14 count with two strands, and 18 count with two, and 18 count with one. So very interesting, very interesting. All right, next we have gems galore, fun cross stitching for the jewelry. <laughs> It gives you each of these designs. They're all small and how you would go about mounting in your different uh, jewelry. It gives you an alphabet, um, several without, I mean, you can do the wreath without the letter or the uh, little flowers without the letter. But I'll see if I can get a picture here without showing all the the stuffs. Okay. Mm, without writing. I need to have a... Here it is. Okay. So, like the rose hips pendant and the, the rose brooch. Let's see here if I can swing it. Should have practiced this. I looked and made notes about all the stuff, but I didn't practice holding it up and showing you the things. <laughs> okay, here's what they look like. So it'll give you the uh, design and then the chart, which is under this. 
um, and then it'll tell you um, what you'll need. So with the rose hips pendant, you'll need 22 count card hanger. And you will also need it with the rock rose brooch. And you'll need the card hanger, a tapestry needle, and a gold brooch or brooch. And then the rose hips, you'll need a gift chain. So it has this little information about what you'll need. And they're not all 22 count card hanger. Some of them are 18. The um, <clears throat> the letter, the small round pendant is 18. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, there you go. That is an 18 count. The one on top, this is 18. This is also 22. But it's, you see it says what you'll need for those. It's very, very thorough. Um, the alphabet is lovely with the little flowers. I mean, it's a cute little small alphabet. There's two alphabets. Um, 18, 22, 22. I mean, there's, let's see, six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight pages of the little little information and the st the stitches. Here's the Celtic cross. I can show you this one real quick. This has one, one thing. This is on 18 count. Okay. I'll tell you what you need. Colors and all. Very, very thorough. And then also, it gives you, I think you saw, how to stitch on Hardanger. Which is not different. I mean, it just tells you um, that it's not a block weave, but it's an actually an even weave. Um, and the easy way to not an easy way, but how to stitch on it if you're if you're needing to know. The next um, page or the next set of uh, stitches is called Mallard and Morhen. These are both 83 wide by 56 high. I'm gonna get a drink. A little bit of back stitching on this one, I believe. Yeah, just a little bit, not much. <clears throat> and they're in the oval, so pretty French knots. Um, says how to do that. The next one is black work. Beautiful black work. This is a guest designer. Does it say who? Rosemary Drysdale, who lives in Long Island, USA. It's black work. So you get this pattern, and it's broken up in sections. How you would do the inside section and then the outside. I guess without carrying over. Um, very. It shows you this. Uh, down here it has a stitch diagram and then instructions on how to make the cushion the pillow. So here I can show you this. Um, it gives you the instructions on how to make those designs without I guess having the the back side show through on the front. Okay. Next one is Victorian Children, Hint of the Past. These are so cute. Oh, let me get it in the picture, Amy. <laughs> Victorian Children, each of these is 79 by 79. Let's see here. What is, let's see, Heather Lofthouse? Threads of Halton, embroidery specialist. I wonder if they're still there. Um, Church Meadow Crafts in Winsford, Cheshire. The threads of Halton are in Halton, Lancaster. Neat. I did see, I googled this real quick, googled it. I searched Etsy and eBay to see if these older Mary Hickmont magazines are available and there are some I did not see this specific issue but I didn't dig too far um, there are some newer ones that are available but I would definitely suggest and I'm going to look for some more to add because this is the only one I have 
So I am definitely going to look for some to add. I'm looking for how to, to show you this next. Okay, <clears throat> so in each of the first two magazines, and I'm assuming for a while here, it, there is a, a section called Masterclass, and this one is on how to design a reflection. So, what she does is show you, come on, come on, come on, come on, well, let me go ahead and do it like this. So, draw out something and then kind of make it pixely. Okay. And then on the other side, she shows, and this is so neat, shows you, so if it's stitched, the different ways to show the reflection. So the top one looks like a half stitch with two strands. And the bottom one looks like, let's see here, each area of the reflection has been worked in cross stitch with one strand of color. So the top section is full X's with two strands on 14 count. Up here, it's a half stitch. Down here, it's a full cross, but with um, one strand. And then, there's more. <laughs> this is one strand half stitch. You see the reflection. This is one strand half stitch, but you also get the, the, the lines of water. <laughs> right the lines of water going across using a blending filament but wait there's more this next one is using 27 now both of these are using 27 count Linda and then this next one is also worked on 27 count Linda and the reflection is worked um, is filled with random back stitches of different lengths using one strand of the appropriate color and a single thread of blending filament. The area of plain fabric is worked in one strand of blending filament again with a random back stitch. So it's more embroidery like. Isn't that neat? So it'll, almost a basket weavy type look to make a reflection. Very, it's, it even has do's and don'ts. Do work areas of one color when the stitches are close to one another, but don't be tempted to jump to an area too far away as it is easy to miscalculate. <laughs> it is easy to miscalculate the distance and later you will find you are out of square. Yes, Amy, you should have read that many years ago. <laughs> oh, such good stuff. All right. Bedford Wool Shop and Bedford, what's MK? Bedford MK. Hmm. Okay. Right here. I'm just reading some of the advertisements. Okay, next one. Oh, not bad. Okay, we're almost done. This is a christening sampler. It is... <clears throat> Where's my notes? Christening sampler. 111 stitches wide by 138 high. You get a full alphabet and you get the um, the um, months already done. Already done. That's my text isn't coming out already. They're already done. <laughs> They're already done. Mm. You get the alphabet and the months already charted for you. And the numbers. You get the numbers too. All right. Let's see. Oh, it talks about what's going to be in the next issue. Again, my text on what's going to. Uh, it, it's, it's just the way it is. What's going to be in the next issue. Look at those peacocks and the windmill and the mm, flowers and the pool. <sighs> so pretty. Look at the peacocks.
pretty, pretty. Material packs. Following requests from readers, we have prepared material packs for a majority of the projects in here, for major projects in this issue. That's awesome. So you can contact them and they will send you the materials for the large projects. In this issue, you will get the Hall House and the Christening Sampler, fabric and threads. It doesn't say how much, but it doesn't matter. I mean, oh yeah, it does. The Christening Sampler would be 11 pounds 95 and the Hall House would be 16 pounds 95. <clears throat> All right, the next several pages, which are also a lovely addition to your your collection is a design it's a des design library so you get the strawberries and strawberries and raspberries strawberries and raspberries the smallest one is five stitches wide by 21 stitches high I think I counted this one but they look this one probably a little bit is probably a little uh, wider and then the larger ones they are 17 stitches no yes no they are six that's not right hmm I don't know what the large one is and it doesn't have, the charts don't have, the charts don't have the 10 count line in it. But it's, um, I maybe, I didn't write that down right. Five wide by 21 high, that's right. But on the large, it's 17 wide by 60, 61, I think that's what it should have been. I have 6H, but it should have been 61 high. Okay. That makes better sense. Okay. The next part of the design library is hearts. The small heart is 7 by 7. I counted this little flower heart down here. And then the large heart in the center is 37 wide by 34 high so you get a good mixture love the one with the bird okay and then you get another one animals farm animals I counted this little chicken the duck is probably a little wider the chicken is 10 by 10 and this horse is 29 by 17, 29 wide by 17 high. So. <clears throat> okay. And then the last couple of pages are extra helps. Uh, starting a piece of work uh, using metallic blending filament. Yes, please, because I've never used it using an embroidery hoop or flexi hoops, um, how to cross stitch, how many strands of cotton do I need, um, dividing the strands of threads, this is just extra, extra tips. And making a cushion and doing uh, lacing right here. Um, Framing a hoop. This is, I guess it's lacing. Yep, lacing a hoop. You know, kind of gathering it, doing a gathering stitch. So, and that is all. That is all for the second issue of the Mary Hickmont New Stitches magazine. So, which is great. It's starting to get cloudy. It's time for me to go. <laughs> but I hope y'all enjoyed this flip through. Um, it's fun. I really enjoy sharing these with y'all. Um, and I really enjoy thinking about what I would stitch in here. What would y'all stitch? That's my question. What would y'all stitch? I would stitch the house, the hall house. Um, I would stitch the hall house and one of the smalls, the little, um, 
one of the little pendants. That would be cute. I've seen those on the little um, keychains or um, gloss drop pretties <laughs> that I can't think of the word. Um, I would stitch one of the ducks. My parents would love that. The girls. I learned how to do reflection. I don't know anybody who's having a baby anytime soon. And it's just nice to have those extra patterns in the library. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. It was fun. Fun talking with you about it. So happy renewing stitches floss tube extra number nine. <laughs> I'll see y'all in the comments. Have a lovely weekend and I will talk to you soon.